Hi, I'm Rebecca Brady, and I'm joined today by Jim Nichols, the Chief Product Officer of Flex Global. Flex Global is the leading technology and service organisation for clinical and regulatory matters with a focus on helping clients to master their digital agenda via proven AI solutions. The key products that Flex Global provide include, include Flex TMX, the company's trial master to file software. The regulatory solutions include Flex Missions, ECTD and CTD, Flex IDMP, Flex EVMPMD and Flex RIM are considered highly innovative in the industry for their out of the box best practice capabilities. Jim, is there any products that I've not highlighted that you guys have? Uh, yes, Becca, actually there's one that I'd like to talk about, which is uh, Flex Neuron. This is mm -hmm. our technology that um, is pretty innovative and, and is, allows us to use artificial intelligence and machine learning to do new and innovative uh, solutions built around extracting content and classifying documents and preparing data from those documents. And I mentioned you were a chief product officer, but what does your role include at Flex Global? So as chief product officer, my role really is around making sure that the offerings that we bring to our customers are really aligned with their needs and their requirements and that we are able to then produce and create those products, whether they're technology or services, in a way that allows us to be as innovative and cost effective as possible for our customers. <laughs> and um, I understand your role includes sort of product management. And so what is product management and how does it help Flex Global better serve your customers? Well, product management really is um, the, the arm of the business that listens to a lot of different inputs. Our customers, the marketplace overall, the regulatory authorities, and even looking at our competition and coming up with these competitive and innovative solutions uh, and defining them at a, a rather granular level in terms of requirements so that we can then work with our partners in development and in our services and delivery organization to make sure that what we are actually producing meets those requirements um, and can be delivered to our customers in a, an efficient manner. Great. Um, and how is Flex Global applying automation technology to the products that you have? Well, uh, there's a couple of great examples uh, within our, our TMF solution, Flex TMF. Mm -hmm. We've embedded the artificial intelligence capabilities of Flex Neuron into it to have AI assisted document indexing. Document indexing is a fairly labor intensive process of looking at every document going into a TMF and ensuring that it has the proper attribution associated with it in terms of metadata, as well as the correct placement into the TMF uh, reference model structure. Uh, Another area where we've applied this automation has been mm -hmm. really around IDMP preparation and how our customers have so much information that will ultimately be part of IDMP, but that information is mostly trapped in documents right now, such as SMPCs and Module 3 documents. The Flex Neuron platform has been able to be trained how to look at those documents and extract and encode much of that data from those documents so that it can be staged in a, in a data management solution such as Flex IDMP and allow them to have that data ready for uh, the period that'll start at probably about 12 or more months when people can begin submitting IDMP information to the EMA. And IDMP is obviously a very big topic at the moment and something that we'll come back to in just a second because you mentioned there about automation with TMF. So how does automation help in your TMF and your regulatory management systems? So within the TMF, uh, part of the process that we call document processing is that people will upload documents that are meant to be placed into the trial master file into the proper artifact or sub artifact location. Mm -hmm. And the content of the document often tells us where that belongs in that structure. We're using the artificial intelligence of Flex Neuron to automate much of that process by having the system look at the document before it even gets to a person. And it's suggesting to that person based on the content and its understanding of that document where that document ought to be placed within the trial master file structure. That's really interesting. And, and what's the difference between sort of the processes that are document driven and the processes that are more data driven? And to add to that, why is it the difference important? Well, documents, you know, tend to be, even when they're well-written, may are literally unstructured content. So you can't ever necessarily, you know, look at the same document and see it twice the same way. There's templates, of course, but documents tend to be content based and delivering a message, whereas data is structured and meant to deliver information and 
be better suited for things like analytics. Mm -hmm. So the way we handle documents is really transforming itself into a data management process because that data is trapped in those documents. And by being able to get that out, we can now build that bridge from document to data. Great. And um, do you have any case studies of how you've been automating this for pharma companies? Sure. We have a couple uh, with one customer, um, AstraZeneca, we've been working with them for several years in a project to help them become ready for IDMP by um, recursively looking at many of their uh, regulatory documents that have IDMP data in them and extracting that information out, uh, quality checking it and providing it to them so that they have an up-to-date collection of data to prepare for IDMP when they will push that into their IDMP management system. Another example would be around health authority communications and a project we worked on where the communications come in probably about 15,000 of them per year and they need to be cataloged properly into a content management system. In this mm -hmm. example, that was um, the Viva Vault system and we were able to look at all of those incoming communications and actually train the system to identify attributes about them such as what product were they related to, what agency did they come from, what registration might this be related to, and pre-populate the, the metadata that would ultimately be needed for properly categorizing and classifying those documents into the vault. I know we've touched on IDMP already, but is, is much of this innovation driven by regulatory trends and requirements? Absolutely. The, 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 what I call the datafication of regulatory um, started some time ago, even as far back as XEVMPD and, and structured product labeling. Um, with the introduction of IDMP and the very recent uh, delivery of the implementation guide version two, it's sending a clear message to industry that uh, there is a big shift in regulatory from purely a document focus to a high degree of structured data that will be submitted. FDA has its own initiatives around this mm -hmm. with uh, the PQ CMC initiative. Health Canada has recently gone with the structured product monograph and the electronic prescribing information initiative in Europe is another example of really transitioning from an unstructured content-based delivery mechanism to a structured data-oriented delivery mechanism. And how does all of this help keep pharmace pharmaceutical companies in compliance? Well, like I said before, when, when information is actually structured and as data, it's much easier to conduct reporting or perform analytics on that to do things such as impact analysis, where, for example, you might want to find all of the products that are uh, being manufactured by a particular manufacturer in a particular role. If that's all in documents, it's really hard to understand that. If you have that as data, it becomes quite easy to understand the impact on regulatory of an affected or proposed change to something you're doing, um, even down at the manufacturing level. And you've mentioned a few different um, updates and, and, and regulatory regulations, but what is the most important new regulation update for pharmaceutical companies at the moment? Well, I think it is IDMP and the, the recent introduction this week of mm -hmm. the final version two of the implementation guide for IDMP. It's really kind of a jumping off point that starts a, a clock running for about two years before it becomes mandatory to submit that data in the IDMP format. And there's a, quite a bit of information to understand the structure, um, the relationships and the business rules related to IDMP are now in a place where we can actually start acting on that in, a, mm -hmm. in earnest. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, the IDMP and how it's going to standardize um, data for the EMA? Well, it, really the goal of IDMP is to have a, a much more comprehensive and hierarchical collection of data that the EMA can then map to safety events the the ultimate goal of article 57 in idmp is is part is all around patient safety and by being able to have this more detailed data housed centrally by the ema they're going to be able to do things such as conduct impact analysis or signal detection around adverse events and how those might relate to uh, what may not appear to be similarities between different products at on the surface but at that detailed data level, they may be then able to find what would be the underlying cause of certain safety events because they have that data at that very detailed level. And if that's what the EMA is using IDMP for, but what does it mean for the pharmaceutical companies? What's, the, what's, what's their benefit? 
I, I think their benefit is the ability to actually have that visibility as well to their own products, mm -hmm. the ability to conduct impact analyses on product changes, um, to understand how the product life cycle and the regulatory life cycle not only affects their needs to provide the documentation, but that the data has to stay in sync with that. And that data becomes a very valuable strategic asset from a regulatory perspective. I think in the past, regulatory and regulatory operations in particular was viewed as not uh, an area that didn't add a lot of value. But I think, you know, regulatory operations and regulatory information now become strategic assets to the organizations because of the value that they're they're collecting for themselves, not only to comply with Art Article 57. Definitely, and that is a transition that companies are making, you know, using that data in a different way. So how is FlexGlobal able to help companies during that transition? Well, for one, we're helping them with using our Flex Neuron technology to help extract that data from those documents in the first place so mm -hmm. that they can start having it um, staged in an area where they can then be prepared to move forward with, as the EMA moves forward. We're helping them with the data management elements as well so that they have uh, an application that's easy to use and actually record that data and amend that data if they have additions to it that aren't found in various documents. They have to then find that data in other systems and either connect that data in or add that data. So we're providing the management tools for that as well. And we're also helping them with more uh, analytical services in terms of helping them understand data sources. Where are all the places that this data might be in their organization so they can do that mapping and understand what's going to come from documents, what's going to come from other systems, so they can have a plan for aggregating that data together into one place in, in readiness for IDMP submissions. And do you have any companies that you're currently assisting on that journey? Uh, we have several companies that uh, we, we're assisting because they're with us for our XEVMPD solution, which is the mm -hmm. precursor to IDMP. So we're working with them to help them understand what will be that migration path to go from XEVMPD to IDMP. In many ways, they're gonna to have to live in both worlds at the same time. While they're preparing their IDMP data, getting it together, making sure that it's all filled out and complete, they have to continue submitting XEVMPD again to be compliant with Article 57. So we're really working with them to help them understand what is that bridging mechanism that helps you stay compliant today and prepare for compliance tomorrow in a much more complex fashion. And one of the areas that often gets brought up with IDMP is regulatory information management. So how are FlexWable able to help in this unique area? Well, really, regulatory information management and IDMP in some ways are the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. That it's just the degree and the detail of that data that's being captured and managed by regulatory. But there are other aspects to regulatory information management or RIM that I think surround initiatives like IDMP, which is really just an expression of RIM data in a certain format to comply with a particular requirement. But the business process around that and ensuring that not only are your regulatory activities, such as having a type two variation filed as an ECTD tied to what will be an IDMP fire message at the same time, will be very important. So having that connectivity across those processes will be very important uh, from a, a broader regulatory information management perspective. And if companies want to bring this kind of automation to their regulatory practice, how should they go about it? Well, I think they have to, as we've often recommended, they have to understand, you know, where is the biggest value for that problem? It tends to be something related to volume. Mm -hmm. If you have a large volume of certain types of documents where there's data trapped inside, they can identify that problem, identify the data they would like to get out, and we can work with them to, in fact, train the brain inside our Flex Neuron with its artificial intelligence to learn how to do that for them in a much more efficient fashion. Um, that's a, one of the many ways that we've been working with customers at, around using that automation and being ready for different regulatory initiatives. I also really love the name Flex Neuron, by the way. I think it's an excellent, excellent idea. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really great to speak with you on some of these initiatives. And um, I look forward to seeing you speak again at the um, Global Pharmaceutical Affairs Summit in April. Thank you, Becca.